Hello everyone. Welcome back to Footprints at Nine. On a Sunday. I wonder, were you watching the very beginning part with that chameleon? He changed colour. It changed colour. I don't know whether it was a he or a, a man or a lady chameleon. And I also don't know how they managed to change colour. Mm, it's quite extraordinary, mm. isn't it? I might be looking that up this week to find out. Okay. Well, I wonder if you can remember back to last week's um, story and what we did. If you can think that far, far back, we looked at the story of creation, but we were specifically concentrating on the light. And not really the light on the fourth day when God made the sun and the moon and the stars, but at the beginning when God said, let there be light. Because before that, it was complete darkness. And it just got me thinking that God is in the darkness. He is part of the darkness. But maybe when he created light, he knew that we as human beings, and maybe all the creatures that he created, would need light to feel safe and secure. Um, maybe it's for our, you know, just for our security. We know we, we need light to be healthy to grow, don't we, Robin? Light's very useful. Light is very especially useful. Especially for plants. Yeah, and we also need it as well. So maybe that is one reason that God created light. But we shouldn't forget that God was in the darkness. So if we're in a dark place, in a dark room, God is still there with us. He's not just in the lightness. That's right. Now, last week, we also set you another challenge. We said, could you start investigating shadow puppets? Because shadow puppets are to do with darkness, but they're also to do with light as well. So we're now going to watch John and Joseph Robson do a demonstration of shadow puppets. and Maybe you can have a go at making your own. Hello, and we are making shadow puppets for a lovely puppet show and you, to make these puppets you have to go online print a photo or a template like this print off a template glue it to a black piece of paper print well yeah glue them together get scissors cut out the shape get like a chopstick or a piece of thin stick and make a puppet show. To make a shadow puppet, go online and print out a template like this, um, anything you want, cars, buses, animals, and then stick it to a piece of card, a black card preferably, and um, cut out glue, and glue them together like this, and then cut out around the template and you have your um, shadow puppet. Then you get a lamp. <laughs> Right, so um, with what we've got set up here, we've got a torch, you can have a lamp as well. Um, you need it against the white wall, and we've just cut out some random seaweed stuff that we just, we didn't get, have a template or anything, we just cut it out. And we have, um, we have to turn the lights off. So, we turn the lights off. Uh, go. We turn the lights off and the torch on, and we're ready to do our... We did this song last week. We're going to do it again this week. It's the one which we say blue is the colour of the deepest ocean, green is the colour of the tallest tree, red is the colour of the world's emotion and your love for me. Yellow is the colour of the rising sunshine. Orange is the colour of the autumn leaves. White is the colour of a heavenly angel watching over me. And because we're also doing rainbows again this week, we're going to do this song again. So, you need to stand up and we'll get going. <laughs> Sunshine, orange is the colour of the autumn leaves, white is the 
shadow of a heavenly angel watching over me. Jesus, you're the giver of you life. The colors of creation paint the world that you have made. Every rainbow holds a promise that his love will never fade. The colors of creation make me want to sing to you. Although I keep on believing, all I have to do is look and I see you. Ready? today and I've just realized I do not need to have my mask on because I'm talking to you on the screen. So I'll put that away. Rachel and Robin asked me to tell you a story today and this is Noah's story. The Bible tells us of a family who lived a very long time ago. The father of the family was named Noah and he was married and he had a wife and he had three grown-up sons named Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the boys were old enough to be married. They had wives as well. We don't know what the sons' names meant, but we do know that Noah's name meant comfort, and that his daddy had named him Comfort because he hoped that Noah would comfort and help him with all the hard work on the land that he had to do just in order to survive. Now God really liked Noah. The Bible says that Noah found favor with the Lord because Noah was a righteous man and blameless among all the people of his time and that he walked with God. Sadly, all the rest of the people in the world had turned away from God. The world was full of violence and fighting in fact, everyone except Noah and his family were constantly thinking of all the evil things that they could do, and they did them. They hurt each other and the animals and the birds and the plants all the time. This had been going on for years and years, and God was heartbroken. And finally, he decided to wipe mankind off the face of the earth with a flood of water. But he warned Noah to save himself and his family and the animals by building a giant ship called an ark. And God told Noah, make yourself an ark of cypress wood. It's a special kind of tree, the cypress tree. 
and make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. And pitch is sometimes called tar. It's a very heavy, sticky, glue-like substances that waterproofs the cracks between the different pieces of wood that made the boat. And God gave Noah very specific measurements about how big that ark should be. He said it should be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. And he put a roof over it. And he also said, make it have lower, middle, and upper decks. That's different levels inside the boat. And to build a door on the side. And you can see a drawing that I did. It sort of is my idea what it might have looked like while they were building the ark. So you see a couple of the sons helping Noah and one of the daughters-in-law standing watching. And the other ones are not in the picture, but they're off getting supplies and maybe making lunch. Anyhow, it took a long time, but finally, God told them it was finished, and he said, get into the ark with your wife and your sons and their wives, and I will send all the animals to you in pairs. That means in groups of two. And I will send all the birds as well, and all the creatures that crawl along the earth. Take them all inside. And remember to store lots of food for you and the animals to eat also. Noah and his family did everything that the Lord commanded them. They went inside the ark, the animals came inside, and God himself closed the door to the ark and sealed it. And then they waited. And then they waited some more. And after seven days of waiting, the floods came. The waters rose fast, and the rain came down, and the ark was lifted right off the ground, and it floated away with all of them inside. And it rained and flooded for 40 days and 40 nights. And then, as suddenly as it started, it stopped. But the floodwaters still were there all around them, and that lasted for another 150 days. And then God sent a wind over the earth, and out came the sun, and the waters began to dry up. Finally, Noah opened a window in the ark and looked outside. It's the first time they looked out. And he sent out a raven, a big black bird, a raven. He turned it loose, and he set it out flying to see what was going on outside. But the, the raven kept flying back and forth and came back. Finally, Noah sent out a dove, but it could find no place to rest its feet. So it came back also and nestled in the ark with the other animals. And Noah thought, okay, I'll wait another seven days and try again. And that time he sent the dove out and it returned to him with a fresh olive leaf, just a little leaf from an olive tree in its beak. And so Noah knew that the plants had begun to grow again. But Noah thought, right, it's a little too early. Things are beginning to grow, but we better wait another seven days. And he did that. And then he sent the same dove out again. And he waited, but the dove never came back. It found a home elsewhere. So that was a sign to Noah that it was safe to turn the animals loose and that they all could leave the ark. And also then God spoke to him and told him, yes, it's time. So they all disembarked from the ark, the animals <clears throat> and his wife and his three sons and their wives. And the first thing Noah did when they got out of the ark was to build an altar to the Lord, a special stone table outdoors. And he did it to thank God for saving them and he offered sacrifices to God as a way of saying, thank you so much, Lord. And God was pleased to bless Noah and his family. And he told them to go out and live and have families of their own. And that all the animals and birds were all there for them, for their own food. And that they should look after the animals and all the creatures. And then 
God told them, I establish my covenant. That means promise. I establish my covenant with you and with all your descendants, all your children and grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren going on forever. I promise you and every other living thing on the earth that I will never again destroy the earth with floods. And I set the rainbow in the clouds as a sign so that whenever I see it and whenever you see it, I will remember my everlasting promise. So that's the story of Noah. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to sing you one of my favourite songs. If you like, you can join in as well. It goes like this. Old man Noah built an ark. Hammer, hammer, bang, bang, out! Old man Noah built an ark. Hammer, hammer, bang, bang, out! Well, he built a window and he built a door. He built the roof and he built the floor. Old man Noah built an ark. Hammer, hammer, bang, bang, ow! All oh, this soaring is hard work. It makes my arm ache. Shall we sing it again? Ready? Old man Noah built an ark. Hammer, hammer, bang, bang, out! Old man Noah built an ark. Hammer, hammer, bang, bang, out! Well, he built a window and he built a door. He built the roof and he built the floor. Old man Noah built an ark. Hammer, hammer, bang, bang, out! That's enough story for now. I've got to go. Bye. Good morning. It's Hilary here. Welcome to my garden. It's dawn and I thought I'd get up early because listen, can you hear? In the background any minute you'll hear the birds. They're getting up. They've had a good night's sleep. There they goes. It's the dawn chorus. Light is coming into my garden. Another thing I want to tell you about light is, you probably can't see it, but this is a £20 note. And on it is a picture of Margate Lighthouse. On the back is a picture of a famous English landscape painter, Mr Turner. And he was revolutionary because he brought light into his paintings. And on here at the bottom is a little quote and he talks about colour being light. If you turn it round the other side, it says something else. I promise to pay the bearer 20 pounds. So somewhere in the Bank of England, there is 20 pounds worth of gold. So if I gave you this 20 pound note, the promise is you've got the value, not of a piece of paper, but of 20 pounds worth of gold equivalent, it's money. You can rely on that promise. But a bigger promise more than you can rely on is the fact that when Noah came out of the ark with his family, God made a big promise. I can break my promises. You can break your promises, maybe. Mom said, lay the table, you may break it but God never breaks his promises. And he gave a promise and he said to Noah and his family, to you and all your future generations and to all living creatures, I will never ever flood all the earth again. And I will put a bow, which we know is to be the rainbow, in the sky, which will be a reminder for me, that's a reminder for God, 
Isn't that interesting? And a reminder to you and all the generations after you, Noah, which means that it's a reminder for you and me. It's a reminder for all the creatures. It's a reminder to your cat and your dog and your hamster that not only does God keep his promise, but he says, I will never ever flood the earth to destroy all everything again. But it also, the rainbow is another promise. It's a covenant promise, which is like a, a contract, an agreement between us. And remember, God keeps his promises. And the rainbow is also a symbol of something very precious and wondrous. Because when we do naughty things and do wrong, in olden days, people had to give an animal sacrifice. But we know now that for God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, that's the Lord Jesus, that whoever trusts in him and believes in him will never ever perish. Now, that means that if we're naughty and we want to stop being naughty and we turn around and ask God to forgive us and trust him because he died on the cross again and rose again, he took all those naughty things, the punishment that we deserve, and sadly he cast them on his son but the wonderful thing is is because he did that because he loves us he has great compassion for us he has great mercy for us and he wants us to live a life he planned and intended for us now there's another rainbow that you and me we haven't seen we will one day as Christians though, because in the Bible, it talks about in the book of Revelation, the throne of God and the Lord sitting on it. And behind it is a marvelous green emerald rainbow. So isn't that wonderful? So whenever you see a rainbow in the sky, and when I do in the clouds, I go, oh, look, there's a rainbow. I think we all do that, don't we? Remember, it's a sign of God's promise, which he will never break to flood the earth. And it's also a promise that the Lord Jesus Christ has taken the punishment that we deserve on him. And that one day, with our sins forgiven, we will be in heaven and we will be able to see the glory of God shining all round that throne, the rainbow will be glorious behind him. Okay, I think morning's nearly here now. Did you hear the birds? Cheerio for now. Light has come. Bye. So now that we've heard the story of the rainbow, I thought you might like to create your own rainbow at home. So if you have a prism, this is one way of doing it. And I've just got a bike torch here and set a screen up behind, turn the torch on and have a rainbow. And this is a result of the light being split by the prism and all the colours of the light are refracted in a different amount so that they show up like a rainbow. If you don't have a prism at home, this is another method that you can use, using a bowl of water and a mirror propped up like this so that half the mirror is in the water and half of it is out. I've also used some blue tack here to hold the mirror in place. Now again, set up your torch like so, shine the light onto the mirror and with a white piece of paper you should be able to find the mirror, the find the rainbow and there it is.
you will need glue and sellotape, a straw, four small circles of paper or card and eight coloured strips of paper or card about the same length as your straw. Begin with four of the strips of paper and one coloured circle. Stick the strips on using some glue to form a cross shape like so. Now do this again with another of your coloured circles and your remaining four strips of paper, sticking them in a cross shape as you did before. Now put some glue in the centre of each of those crosses you've created and then stick them together, turning one upside down on top of the other and rotating it so that the crosses don't line up anymore. Now take another of your circles, put some glue on it and one by one pull up each of your paper strips and stick it to the circle at the top so that you are making a round shape. Now take your last paper circle, put some glue on it and slide it in and stick it underneath where you have just made all those joins with your paper strips. Now ask someone to help you to make a hole in the top of your ball shape. I've used a pin here but then we need to make the hole bigger so use a pencil to widen it out making sure it is plenty big enough for your straw to easily slide up and down. Now do exactly the same on the other end. Take your straw and carefully cut four small slits in one end about one or two centimetres long. Now push your straw through both of the holes that you made in the ball. Now spread out the ends of the straw that you cut on the top like this and secure them well with a piece of sellotape. Hello, it's me, John. Well, as you know, this week it's my turn to wish everybody a happy birthday. So, here it is. I wish everybody, everywhere, a happy birthday. See you all next year. Bye. Sorry, there's two people with birthdays and they are Gabrielle and Val and they are also very old so we just sing. Is that right? Yes John it is. Right, here's the song. D-I-R-T-H-D-A-Y B I R T H D A Y Oh sing along Happy birthday to you Sing it soft Sing it loud Sing it just for you Oh sing along Happy birthday to you May Jesus be with you all year through Gabrielle lots of claps Val Lots of claps. 
May Jesus be with you all year through. Was that okay? Yes, John, perfect. Right, bye. I found this song recently. It's all about colours of creation. I know we've never done it before, but it's really quite simple. So if I put the words up as we're singing, I'm sure you can join in with us. Should mm. we do that? It's also got rainbows. Yeah. Yeah. The colours in creation say to us each day, God loves us so much. Rainbows high above us are another way. God loves us so much. A rainbow up above, the promise of his love. God loves us so much, his promises are true. God loves you. Green it fills the forest over countries wide. God loves us so much. Purple is the thistle on the mountain side. God loves us so much. Pinking is the blossom on a springtime tree. God loves us so much. Blue it is the colour of the sky and sea. God loves us so much. God loves us so much. A rainbow up above, the promise of his love. God loves us so much. His promises are true. God loves you. Orange is the colour at the break of dawn. God loves us so much. Yellow is the sun that keeps us nice and warm. God loves us so much. Red is his reminder, Jesus died for me. God loves us so much. And all the rainbow colours are for us to see. God loves us so much. God loves us so much. The rainbow up above, the promise of his love. God loves us so much. His promises are true. God loves you. There's a rainbow in the sky, so every girl and boy knows that water can never more totally destroy. Purple, orange, pink and green, yellow, red and blue, reminds us all, shows everyone, God loves you. God loves us so much. The rainbow up above, the promise of his love. God loves us so much. His promises are true. God loves you. His promises are true. God loves you. Well, I hope you enjoyed singing along with us with that song as well. You might want to go back and re-listen to it as well. It's now time for us to pray. So if it helps, you can put your hands together. If it helps, close your eyes. Or maybe you just want to bow your heads. Yes, let's be quiet and talk to God and see if he speaks to you as well. Father God, we thank you for the light that you have given us. We thank you for the light right at the beginning of time. We thank you for the sun, the moon, the stars and the rainbows. We thank you that the rainbow is a promise to us that you will give us your protection. Please help us see your love and your light in all the situations that we might find ourselves in. Some of those situations will be good and joyous. Some of them, they might be not very nice places and we may feel that we're in the dark. But you were in the dark at the very beginning of time. So help us to know that if we are in a dark place, you are with us then as well. Bless us as we go into this week. Give us your protection and help us to know that you are walking beside us, 
behind us and leading us forwards. We ask this in your name, Father. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed Footprints this week. I hope that you've managed to learn something about light and how it isn't always just white, we can split it. And maybe if you get time in the week, you'll have a chance to experiment, see if you can split some light. And if you can, and you can take a photograph of your split light or your rainbow, send it in because it would be great to show them. It would be. It would be also good if you make the craft that Sasha made earlier. Let us see if you've managed to make that and see you twizzling it in your fingers yeah. as well. That would be good. And shadow puppets. Yeah, shadow puppets. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if next week will be a week that we have shadow puppets or maybe the week after. Yeah. We will be doing some. Um, but I'd like to see yours as well. Yeah, it'd be really good to get some feedback from you this week. See what you've been up to. Also, if you need prayer, please do get your parents to send us an email or a WhatsApp message telling us what you would like prayer for. Yeah. Tell us about not just the things that maybe are going wrong that you need help with, but maybe tell us about things that you're really thankful for as well. It'd be really lovely to see, to hear from you because... We really, really do miss seeing you. Yeah. Um, it's been far too long, and sadly it doesn't look as though we're going to be seeing you um, anytime soon. We're hoping next week we can have face-to-face -face meeting with some of you, some of the families, but we're still awaiting approval from that, so we'll let your families know if some of you are able to come to the centre next week. So we might see some of you, okay? But if not, uh, keep well, stay safe this week, and we'll see you all soon. again very soon. Hopefully. Take care. Bye. Bye.